Welcome to the Why So Serious Half Year Awards. Yay! Congratulations, Yay. we've made it six months without killing Yay. each other. Yay! Another six months. Especially no you, death. Mary. Oh, I'll kill you. So we're going to talk about 10 different awards that we're giving out for the six months of 2013 so far. And first up, we have most disappointing film of the year. The film that we were like, this is going to be absolutely I amazing. Way. And then came out going, doing the Charlie Brown Arrested Development walk. So sad. We're just... Uh, uh, the Place Beyond the Pines. Yeah. Derek Keane, France, director, reteams with Ryan Gosling, the star of Blue Valentine, for a father-son uh, generation spanning. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even get just it out. I'm exhausted even talking about it. Also Father's has son. Bradley Cooper and uh, Dane DeFan? Dane DeHaan Dane and Dehan. Eva Mendes. And Eva Mendes. So the cast is fantastic. The acting is actually mostly pretty good. Yep. But it is shockingly boring once so boring. the first third of the film is over. And the last third of the film is the most awful ending to any potentially good film that there could have been. It's the most whingy ending as well. It's, it's just all over the gaff. Just so, no. No. No, no. No. Most surprisingly good. <laughs> we have two different ones though. Do we? Yeah. What are they? Yours is Oblivion. Oh, yeah. You've got 30 seconds. Go! Um, Why did you like it? I really liked the look of the film. I really liked the fact that it was a, such a slow burn and um, it built up, um, you know, it was a combination of pretty much every sci-fi film that you've ever seen and the ending was not all that surprising, but it was the journey through the film that I thought was really interesting. Tom Cruise has one I'm Tom Cruise moment, but other than that, he's actually quite understated and it's really quite enjoyable. Plus it's from the director of Tron Legacy, which wasn't great. So we had right to think that it wasn't going to be good. Yeah. And it ended up being good. Yeah. My one was World War Z because it had been plagued by production woes ha! since it... Plagued. <laughs> since <laughs> it began shooting. Uh, the budget, apparently, including promotion, has spiralled past 400 million. Holy crap. Uh, so it has to make more than that to get its money back. But it ended up being a pretty decent action film that then descends into a pretty decent horror film. Um... And Brad Pitt's always solid, even when he's not grey. He's always yeah. He's yeah. always very watchable. Brad so. Pitt not great is better than a lot of actors at their best. Can't say better than that. Good work, Brad Pitt. Film that everyone else loved that we hated. <laughs> Yours was Man of Steel. Yes. <clears throat> yes, it was. And if you've watched the June episode of Weiser series, you will know why. So I'm not going to labour the point anymore. What was your one? Pilgrim Hill. Um. I cannot flog this donkey enough. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone I know has, who has seen this film has loved it, uh, except for one person. Uh, but that's like me and him versus the world of Irish criticism. Yes. Uh, I just did not like that film. I'm not going to go into detail about it because I feel like I'm just going to get more hate for, you know, hating it. But I just it wasn't for me. Just to clarify, you didn't hate it because it was an Irish film, you hated it because of the merits of the film, so anyone who's going to give us hate because we're potentially slagging a Irish film, that's not the reason why. Yeah, plus it's just an opinion. Yeah, people. Just my opinion. Yeah. So, it's yeah. grand, like. Yeah. Best film that everyone else hated that we loved. <laughs> Yours was Byzantium. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote this list last night, I, you know. Ages ago. You have to write it down. It's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Byzantium. Uh, Neil Jordan returns to the world of a vampire flick. Um, Did everyone hate it? Yeah, a lot of people hated it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. A colleague of ours mm. in the Irish film criticism world called it unreleasable. Oh. Yeah. Um, I don't think anything with Gemma Arterton is unreleasable. Gemma Arterton playing a stripper at the beginning as well. So that was a good one for all, <laughs> all the boys. I really liked it. I loved the fact that it felt like a companion piece to Interview the Vampire. Um, and, you know, of course it's not as good as Interview the Vampire, but it's pretty gosh darn good, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. So did I, actually. Yeah. I quite liked it. Uh, my one was Olympus Has Fallen, Ugh. which uh, was the most brainless but fun action film we've seen this year so far. Super violent. Doesn't, not really concerned about, you know, making sense or... <laughs> uh, character development or anything like that but it was just a lot of fun felt like a Bond film from the 80s that's a pretty good description yeah, yeah. yeah. or like a Steven Seagal during his heyday movie 
take that as you will. We can't do best super. Last year we had best superhero movie, but we can't do that this year because there hasn't been enough superhero films yet. I know it feels like there has been nothing but, but I think there's only been like three or two. 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 So. We're doing best superhero movie instead. No, we're no, not. We're, not. we're doing best blockbuster movie instead. <laughs> but as it turns out, the best blockbuster movie is a superhero movie, Iron Man 3. Yay! So it all... You know, it all it really worked out quite well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Shane Black, fantastic director, putting his budget to work. Great cast. Great midpoint twist that nobody's seen coming. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, like the other... The competition in the blockbuster stakes like it's like the Man of Steel, Oblivion, After Earth, Iron Man Three. Iron Man Three. Um, saddest movie of the year, and I've seen it on New Year's Day because that's when it got released. I actually saw it last year, but it was released this year, so fine, whatever. The Impossible. I cried. I cried. Naomi Watts, Ewan McGregor um, are a couple fighting a tidal wave. Couple on holiday in. Uh, Indonesia, well, when the tsunami hits and they're all separated from their kids and they try to find each other and, you know, just so sad. Yeah. It's so a, it's, sad. It really, like, sniper rifle aim your tear ducts and yeah. cry. You cry for me! <laughs> so you sad. will be fighting but a um, tidal wave of tears in this uh, film. <laughs> <laughs> See what I, did there? I do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, very sad. If you're looking for a weep fest, this is the one for you. And it's also a pretty good film. It's not just sad and then everything else is crap, but it is actually really No, good. it's not beaches like. <laughs> <laughs> Best film that nobody went to see. Last year was Margin Call, which yeah. I think has eventually come around to finding an audience. Well, uh, yeah. And being appreciated for the great film that it is. So yeah. hopefully it'll happen for this year as well. And it is Stoker. Oh, yeah. Film that cost nine million and did not make its budget back. Holy crap! Yeah. That's ridiculous. Stoker. Six million worldwide. Very sad. Stoker is a stunningly beautiful film. I mean, even if you're kind of bored by the storyline, you can just sit there and watch the cinematography and the edits and the cuts. It's absolutely stunningly beautiful. But as well as that, Matthew Good is the most. He gives the best performance I think I've ever seen from him. Oh right. So <laughs> what? From anyone from ever? No, from him. The history of acting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, he is. He's really good. Nicole Kidman was really good. Uh, Mia, was it what's good? her name, it was also very good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it is primarily all about the visuals. Yeah. It's just gorgeous. Lush. And the soundtrack, I think, was Clint Mansell. I'd have to double check that, but I almost certainly was. And he's really good. He's one of my favourite soundtrack composers. It's, uh, so it's just great for all of the senses. It's just tense and really well scripted and... Quite actually, it's a simple story when it gets down to it, but it's getting to the core of the story that, you know, it's yeah. just fantastic. So if you haven't seen great. it, and we sure think you haven't, no. you should, because it is very good. Trust us, it's really good. Right, we're down to the last two, three. Mm. Last three. Um, having the best year so far award. <laughs> last year was Matthew McConaughey. This year, it's... Do you know I need this? No. no. Steven Soderbergh. Oh, yeah. Uh, for Behind the Candelabra and Side Effects. Yeah. Two of the better films uh, of the year so far. From a director who has retired yeah. several times. <laughs> um, side Effects, fantastic psychological Hitchcockian thriller. Yeah. Behind the Candelabra, very good um, flamboyant biopic drama. Both of them completely different. You wouldn't even guess they were from the same director within six months of each other. But both both really really good and we look forward to Soderbergh's return to filmmaking once he's finished retiring and yeah, doing whatever it is Behind the Candelabra was technically a TV movie so it's going to be exempt from all the Oscar nominees because it was released for HBO and made for HBO and it will win every Golden Globe that there is yeah. especially for Rob Lowe oh Rob Lowe so good good job the Taylor Kitsch sponsored <laughs> having the worst year <laughs> last year was won by Taylor Kitsch uh, so we named the category after him. Yeah, because he was having a particularly <laughs> bad year. But this year, um, after having such a good year last year with Looper and Moonrise Kingdom. Yeah. Bruce Willis. What the heck, Bruce Willis? G.I. Joe 2. Ugh. Die Hard 5. Ugh. Fire with Fire. <laughs> In six months. <laughs> Just. This is really, like, they're Just. three of the worst films I've seen this yeah. year. 
the, the um, Venn diagram of crap that Taylor Kitsch was in last year. Yeah. So wiped off. Yeah, just, just, you, you've just Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis is much heck? bigger. Yeah. Uh, the only redeeming point for you is that um, Red 2 is yeah. coming out soon. Yeah. Uh, that could potentially be good uh, from the director of Galaxy Quest, which was one fantastic. of the most underrated yeah. comedies I think I've ever seen. Um, I think we should also give an honorary mention to someone in this category, Ryan Gosling. What the heck? Gangster, Gangster Squad. Squad and The Place Beyond the Point. You had so many amazing films up until this point. I'm talking directly to you now, Ryan Gosling. What the heck were you thinking about these two? And Only God Forgives was booed at can. Yeah, well, look, everything gets booed at can. Yeah, you so... Know. Someone stands chance. up in the middle of the film and 2,000 people are like, oh! So, you know, that's not really a gauge. Um, but the reviews coming out are not good. Yeah, so unless that's good and you can turn your whole year around, the end year awards could be yours, yeah, right Mr. Gosling, if you're lucky. Mm-hmm. The final award is the award for the film I'm most excited about seeing in the next six months of the year. We have one each. Yeah, got- it was really difficult to call, actually, because there's so many great films still to come in, well, potentially great films to come in 2013. We've got Thor 2, we've got Elysium, there's so much, but my choice was The World's End. Um, the final instalment of the Cornetto Blood and Ice Cream trilogy from Nick Frost, Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright. Um, need I say more? If you've seen Hot Fuzz and Shaun of the Dead, you know what what's potentially going to happen here. It's going to be end of the world, it's going to be irreverent, it's going to be funny and rather silly. So I'm really looking rather forward silly. to it. Rather <laughs> silly. Rather uh, silly. My choice w- was, or is, Gravity. Hmm. The new one from Alfonso Curan, director of Children of Men, which is one of my favourite films of all time. And, that and Harry Potter film. Azkaban, which is the best Harry Potter film. Yep. It's Clooney and Bullock as two astronauts in space and their space station gets destroyed. So it's just the two of them left adrift slowly floating away from Earth and how they contemplate with their own slow death. Mm. Doesn't sound like Doesn't sound like a laugh riot, no. But the trailer is the best trailer I've seen for any film this year so far. It's properly tense, only 90 seconds long, so check that out if you haven't seen it. really good trailer. And Alfonso is just like a fantastic visionary director, so I have nothing but hope. Hope. And that's it for our Half Year Awards. Thanks again to Mary and Brian and City World Dublin for letting us film in here because we've got to mention you in the other one. Yep, sorry, Cindy World. Uh, thank so you. we thank you twice. Thank you for the other ones as well. Yeah. Uh, that's been Brogan. That's been Rory. And we will see you at the end of July. And, or unless you only watch the award shows, in which case we'll see you in December. Yeah. Slates. Bye. Bye-bye.